I've plugged in four components in the solder the spreadboard here. This is a TMP36. It's a temperature sensor that has three leads and I've put one into each socket here. This is a cadmium sulfide photocell that acts as a resistor. It's got two leads and I've put one into each of these sockets here. This is an LED and I've attached it on one side up there and the other side down here so it will emit light eventually. An important thing to notice with LEDs is that you've got one prong that's longer than the other prong. It's important which direction the current flows through an LED. So the longer prong always goes to the more positive value of voltage. And then I've got this push button and it's got four pins here, here, and here, and here. And those four pins, I'm not sure how they're connected. So I'm going to need to explore what's going on with these different components before I can build a circuit. I've drawn them schematically over here. Here's my TMP36 lined up the way it is with the three pins coming out the bottom. My photocell, my diode, this is the symbol for a light emitting diode. The arrow is a regular diode and these little wavy lines going away from it indicate that it can give off light. The push button over here, I've just drawn the four separate pins and I'll add some more stuff once I know how they're connected together. If I power on my multimeter, I can measure voltage, but so far there's no voltage in the circuit. So I'd like to measure characteristics of these components, maybe resistance. Now there's multiple opportunities down here on the resistance scale to measure different levels of resistances. I'm going to start with this one down at the bottom. That's a continuity test. It's got this little musical note symbol that tells me maybe it's going to make a noise. And if I touch the leads together, I hear a noise. I can also see on my screen that it shows zero resistance. So I'm going to plug one lead into that outlet from the push button and I'll plug the other one in here. They're not connected, but if I push the button they are connected. So that's interesting. What about these other pins? That one's connected even when I push the button. It's always connected. That one, not connected when I don't push the button but it connects when I do push the button. And those two on this side always connected together. So that's got some useful information there. That tells me more about this push button. That those two pins are always connected together. And those two pins are always connected together. And that when I push down on the button, it makes a connection between those two pins, which is the same as making a connection between those two pins. So I've used my continuity test to figure out something about the way this push button works. It only has two connections effectively for electrical connection. Why does it have four pins on it in the mechanical package here? Think about that one. See what you can come up with for an answer. So, what else have we got? We've got this TMP36. I could try measuring continuity on it. Well, it's showing me some resistance values, but none of those pins are connected together. Likewise, on the cadmium sulfide photocell, it's showing me a resistance value and it changes as the light falling on the photocell changes but I don't know what units those are. So let's try switching to a scale that we can understand. Okay, I'm on the 20 kilo ohm scale now. I can go to the 2 kilo ohm scale and I get about 1.1 kilo ohms. That's 1157 ohms and if it gets darker oh the resistance goes up off scale so I'll need to go to a larger scale 
to be able to measure that resistance and not have it go off the scale. So I'm going from about 1000 ohms up to about 3000 ohms if I put it in the shade or about 5000 ohms if I cover it with my finger. So now I know something about this vari variable resistor. I'm not sure I can find out very much about this LED. What's it going to tell me? It's got a very high resistance at this point. So let's see if we can put these together into some useful circuits. First off, I'm going to connect the power supply to one of the power rails. So I'll go to the 5 volt pin here on the Arduino and I'll go to the positive rail here. Now that one connects all of these pins all the way along that line all together to plus 5. Now I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to connect to ground to the 0 volt lead and I'd like to connect that to the bottom but I'll connect it over here for a start. So now I should have plus 5 and ground on all of these pins along here. So let's try measuring that. I'd like to measure DC voltage so that sinusoidal symbol there going up and down that's AC voltage. This intermittent symbol here that means DC voltage and I'll choose the 20 volt scale because I know I'm working with something around 5 volts which is going to be more than the 2 volts on the 2 volt scale. So I've got the black connected to common. I'll plug that into ground. Now I'll take the red lead, plug it in there, and I see something very close to 5 volts. So that's good. Now I'd like to have my circuit diagram make some sense to me, having 5 volts go through these things and then down to 0 volts here. So what I'm going to do is to make my circuit make visual sense to me, I'm going to connect this rail here down to this rail here as well. So these will all be at ground potential. And now I can move my voltmeter's ground lead, the common connection, down there and get it out of the way. So what's the output voltage on my push button right now? Well, there's no voltage there. Push the button, no voltage. It's not hooked up in a circuit. There's no power. So what I'll do is I'll connect plus 5 to this side of the push button. I'm still seeing no voltage on this side of the push button. But if I push the button, I see 5 volts. If I release the button, I see 0 volts. But right now, what's actually happening is this push button isn't connected to anything. So there might be a little bit of stray charge kicking around on here. So if I really want to be sure that goes back down to 0, I'm going to have to tie it to 0 with a resistor. So I'll take one of these 10K resistors and I'm going to connect that pin of the push button back down to ground. And that'll make sure that when it's not connected to anything else, it's connected through this resistor to ground and that resistor will pull that voltage down to ground. Now when I do push the button, I'll still see 5 volts because now it's connected directly through this wire to the 5 volts and there's current flowing through the circuit through this fairly large resistor and down to ground. So almost no voltage drop across the push button. All of the voltage drop by Ohm's law is happening across this large resistor. So now I've got a push button that will allow me to switch on and off between 0 and 5 volts. 
So I've got a signal that I could read with my Arduino. Or I could use my LED to give me an indication of what I'm getting out of here. So let's go from the output of the push button to the positive side, that's the long lead of the LED. And then we'll go from the negative side of the LED to ground. And that way, if this is plus five, current will flow through the LED. But remember, we always need a current limiting resistor for our LED. So I'm gonna take this 330 ohm resistor that I got in the kit. I'm gonna connect it to ground and to the LED. So if I push the button, the LED goes on because I've got 5 volts flowing through the LED, current limited by this 330 ohm resistor flowing down to ground. If I wanted to hook this up as a separate circuit, I could just attach that directly to plus 5 and the current flows from plus 5 through the LED, through the current limiting resistor to ground. So let's make some measurement here. We know that this is plus 5. It's the same all the way along that vertical row where these are all attached together electrically. What about in here, in between? Okay, it's 2.8 volts. There's some voltage drop across the LED, about 2.2 volts, and the remaining voltage drop about 2.8 volts is going through this 330 ohm resistor. And we could calculate the current that's going through each of those. But let's go back now and connect this to the push button so that we've got an indication of whether or not the button has been pushed. Now we'd like to get some information out of our CDS photocell, our cadmium sulfide photocell. To make that work out, we're going to have to hook that up into a voltage divider. A voltage divider allows us to get a voltage change when we see a change in resistance. So I'm going to take this 10K resistor and I'm going to connect one side of the cadmium photocell through that resistor to ground. The other side of the photocell I'm going to connect to plus 5. So now I've got a circuit. I've got voltage flowing from plus 5 up at the top here through the photocell which is going to have a variable resistance and then through this fixed 10,000 ohm resistance down to ground. So with Ohm's law, we can determine the total amount of current flowing. But what we'd really like to see is a voltage signal that we can measure that'll tell us something about how much light there is falling on the photocell. So right now I'm seeing 4.4 volts, 4.5 volts. That means that most of the voltage drop in this circuit is happening down here in this 10K resistor. A small voltage drop up here where I remember I've only got about 1K. So that would be about one-tenth of the voltage drop. And it's a voltage drop of about 0.5 volts out of 5, so that's, that's making sense. If I create some shade, I see that voltage goes down because now the resistance in the photocell is higher and as a result there's more voltage drop across the photocell and less in proportion across the, uh, the 10K resistor. And the lowest voltage I can get is about 3.3 and the highest about 4.4. I just picked this 10K resistor because that's what I had. What will happen if you choose a different resistance? You'll check that out in the lab. Now finally, I want to see what's going on with this TMP36 temperature detector. I'm going to connect pin 3 to ground down here because that's what I found out was the right connection to make from the data sheet. And I'm going to connect pin 1 up here to plus 5. Again, because that's what I found out when I looked at the data sheet. And I was careful to look at the diagram and line up the package of the TMP36 exactly the way it showed on the data sheet. And if I plug that in there, I see 0.72 volts. 
I could go down to the 2 volt scale and get a little more resolution out of that. Still 0.72, but with a little more detail. 718 millivolts. And if I warm up the TMP36, that voltage value goes up, indicating that the temperature is going up because my finger is warmer than the air. I take it off, it'll go back down again. So we've got all of these devices now hooked up and working in a circuit like this. Let's translate that to a schematic diagram over here so that maybe we can understand a little bit more about what's going on. We've used our Arduino so far just as a power supply. We've taken 5 volts and we've got 5 volts on this rail across the top for all of these different components in the circuit. So I'm going to draw a line across here and label it as 5 volts. Likewise, we've got the ground connection here over to this rail and down to this rail. So I'm going to draw a line across the bottom and I'm going to label that as 0 volts. Or what you'll often see is this symbol indicating that that's the ground potential, 0 volts. Now, how have we hooked things up? Well, let's start with our push button. I hooked up this side to plus 5, made a connection there. And I hooked up this side through a 10K resistor to ground. And as a result, when I measure in the middle here, that will give me either 0 or 5 volts, depending on whether or not the button is pushed or not pushed. Now here's my LED. Here's the LED here. I have tried it with it attached to 5 volts and it lights right up. But what I've hooked up here is the input to the LED is coming from this connection here, the output of the push button. So when this goes to plus 5, I'm putting a positive voltage on the input to the LED. From the LED, I'm going through a 330 ohm resistor down to ground and that allows current to flow and light to come out of the LED. I measured in here, usually we don't care what that voltage is, we're much more interested in whether we see that light go on or not. Cadmium sulfide photocell, I've connected that to 5 volts and I've connected a resistor on the bottom here down to ground and this is where I'm measuring a voltage in here and that measured voltage varied depending on how much light was falling on the photocell and that was a 10k resistor. Finally the TMP36 I connected plus 5 to pin 1 I connected pin 3 to ground and I got a measured voltage on the output from the TMP36 that had something to do with temperature because when I warmed up the TMP36 that voltage went up. So let's check again. Our voltage is about 0.71 or 0.72 from the TMP36. Our voltage with the light on from our CDS photocell is about 4.4 and that gives us an indication of what the light level is. Let's see what happens if we use a different voltage source for these two measurement devices, our photocell and our uh, TMP36. Instead of plugging into 5 volts, I'm going to plug into the next pin over, which is the 3 volt pin. The 3.3 volt supply is about what I expect, and we saw that the output from the photocell circuit went down when the power supply voltage went down. So the output of the circuit from this voltage divider is proportional to the size of the voltage that is being applied across the voltage divider. That makes this a ratiometric measurement uh, of the light. The voltage output from the measurement device is proportional to the supply voltage that we're putting into the measurement. On the other hand, if I go to the TMP36 over here, I'm still seeing 0.72 volts, or on the finer scale, about 0.717. That's the same voltage I saw before. This TMP36 
doesn't depend on the supply voltage. It's non-ratio metric. So a voltage divider like this, or a Wheatstone bridge that we'll see later on, provides a ratio metric measurement. But many sensors, like this TMP36, provide output values of voltage that are independent of the input power supply voltage. So I switch over to 5 volts, I still get the same output. Ratio metric, non-ratio metric. That's going to turn out to be important later. So now you can build this circuit yourself in the lab. You can follow this schematic or follow this layout diagram. In this case, they look very similar because I've made my schematic look like the way I laid it out on the circuit board. Or, on the other hand, you could say, I've laid out my circuit board, my solderless breadboard here, in a way that looks exactly like the schematic, so it's easier to understand and easier to explain. It's going to be a lot easier to fit things onto this circuit board, though, if we plug things in a little bit more compactly. And we may make these electrical paths that go from plus 5 down to ground a little more convoluted and a little more compact by connecting them back to the ground rail that we've got up here. So, build this one in your, in your lab setting, test it to make sure that it's working and that it's doing all of the things that I've been able to do here on my circuit. Once you've got that going, you'll be ready to program the Arduino and actually record some measurements with the Arduino and report them back to your computer.